Well, hey guys, it's Dr. Drake 63 here today. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hey, recently I did a, an overview on how to assemble uh, a lower for an AR-15. We took a stripped receiver, we added springs, detents, fire control group, all of those things, as well as the buffer tube uh, and the stock. And specifically, uh, I mentioned during that video that I was not going to stake that castle nut, which is the nut that holds the buffer tube to your lower receiver. Well, um, had a couple folks ask me, well, hey, why not? It's not permanent. Somebody else asked me, hey, can you show us how to do it? Um, I actually did go ahead and stake uh, on that particular spikes build, the castle nut, because I determined I was not going to put a fixed old school kind of stock on it. I was very pleased with uh, uh, the adjustable six position stock that I put on there. Uh, but I do have uh, an older SBR that I realized I never staked. Now, I put thousands of rounds through this thing. Uh, the nut has never come loose, but uh, it's as uh, good a time as any to go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you how easy it is. This is going to be a real super short video, and uh, I hope you enjoy it and learn something. Thanks. Okay, so all staking is, we're going to zoom in real close. If you look right there at that little dot, all it is is we are displacing some of the metal on that base plate into that notch on the castle nut. So it's going to make it real hard for that to work loose. That's all it is. That's all it is. Um, when you talk about staking the gas key on your bolt carrier group, that's all that is. So staking is just displacing metal and forming uh, basically a, an interlocking portion. And that's why you have on that castle nut in the back, you have the notches where the wrench goes, and in the front, you have opportunities to stake it. Now, I'm going to show you here where I actually had gone ahead and staked this in two places. The other one was a better job than this one, but uh, it gets the job done. Okay, So the first thing we're going to do on this uh, SBR is uh, take, take the lower off and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this castle wrench. We're going to make sure that this nut's tightened real good, which I, I already know that it is. And our other tool tools we're going to use, this is a center punch. And this particular one that I find to be the right size, you see it's a quarter inch center punch, 530. And you see you've got a point right there. And that's what you're going to use to displace the metal. The other thing I have is a hammer. It recommends a ball peen, although this one does the job as well. Okay, it's nice flat hammer surface. The other thing we want to make sure we do is that we lay this back of this nut down against something hard so we're not beating against the shape of the stock or a part or anything like that. But that's about it. So I'm going to break down my, my uh, SBR and we'll get at it. Okay, I want you to notice what I've made sure is that the back of the castle nut right here, the back of this tube just is flat against this block of wood. In other words, there's not any space down here. I'm not doing anything that by striking a blow is going to bend our axis, hurt the threads, anything like that. And all this is doing, this tape right here, is just holding it in a nice position while I do this because where I want to stake this one is right here. So I'm going to strike right here on the metal and move that portion of this metal into that notch. So that's all we're going to do. Simple as can be. Uh, I'm going to give it some deliberate blows, but I'm not trying to drive a 10 penny nail each time. Uh, what I want to do is see how I'm doing after each particular blow and uh, do some comparisons until it, it looks like we've displaced a good a portion of that metal like we like it. See if we can do this without knocking the camera over. So I'm placing this exactly on that precipice right there. Thank you. 
let's show you what we're doing so far. So we're getting the desired effect. We've displaced metal into that notch. A little bit more off center than I'd like, but that's not a big deal. I'm going to give this a couple more blows and uh, we'll call it a day. So as I mentioned, I thought uh, I thought this was an excellent stake job right here. It's completely centered, and uh, a perfect amount of material move. This is on the uh, on the spikes build that we've been talking about lately. But uh, bottom line over here, like I said, serves its purpose. It's going to be really hard for that castle nut to nut to to turn just from uh, from firing it. You'd have to to really put some elbow grease on that to make it happen. Okay, I did uh, did uh, forget to tell you that uh, in terms of other ways to stake, you can also get a spring-loaded punch. They're relatively inexpensive. Uh, if you don't like using the hammer, I have no problem swinging a hammer myself. But um, it's just such an easy thing to do, and it's it's just such good insurance against having that castle nut come loose. Um, at the wrong time and uh, rendering your firearm unus unusable and uh, Loctite just not a good a good idea for that uh, For a lot of reasons. I won't get into but I mentioned earlier that I was so impressed with this six position stock and uh, Having fired a couple 220 rounds at this point through this firearm. I love it for a couple reasons number one you know, I'd always been a big fan of this style stock because you had the double lockdown capability, which was nice. I don't like wiggle on a stock at all. And for whatever reason, when you get stocks from <clears throat> the Smith & Wessons of the world, uh, the Colts of the world, they always give you something that's just not all that good. Case in point, you always get something like this, which is flimsy, which wobbles and just isn't all that impressive and even some of the more expensive colts or smith and wessons come with these things and i've just always wondered why i guess they're in cahoots with the aftermarket guys but this particular one which is called the moe sl carbine stock is extremely well fitted to a mil spec buffer tube and guys comparing this to what i kind of consider one of the gold standards which is the buttstock that our friends at BCM produce. Uh, I'm going to have to say that I actually like this better. It locks down just as tight. It's a little bit easier to manipulate. I like it. It's got a nice, uh, a nice cheek weld on top too. So anyway, that's a little bit of a diversion. But uh, whole point is, is simple things you can do if you're building your ARs. If uh, you're going to spend the money and time to put them together. You might as well do it right if you can. And, you know, the real savings here is the, the guy, even at the best factory, doesn't care about your rifle as much as you're going to. So if you take your time and want to do stuff right, there's no reason you can't build at least as good as what you're going to get from the factory, assuming you're starting with the right components. So I want to appreciate you watching this today. I know me personally, I like my steak well done. I think, uh, I think you'll agree that's the way to do it. Anyway, this is Dr. Drake 63 saying thanks for watching from the workshop.